In Creo Parametric, you can perform a topology optimization. Here I have a part model. I've created a very simple scenario. And when you are intending to perform a topology optimization, you are going to create a part with multiple bodies. Let me orient you to that. First, let me hide one of the bodies over here. The yellow block that you see in there is a body where I'm going to have a load applied. And the big gray area is my starting envelope. That is a, another body. And then what you see in orange, this is where my part is going to be mounted. There are going to be three different locations down at the bottom. Let me bring back the blue area. So the blue area is another body where I don't want any geometry. I have excluded geometry from being in this area. So I've made a little bit of a shape there inside of my starting geometry. So to initiate the topology optimization, go to the Applications tab. And here we have the Generative Design button. And from here, you can do both topology optimization. And if you have an account, you can also do a generative design where you have multiple different solutions. And when you go into the generative design function, well, you'll have this separate tree and you can see that we have a bunch of different warnings. So it sort of tells you what you need to do in order to be able to run this. Another way is just starting on the left side of the ribbon and working your way to the right. So first off, I need to define my design spaces. Let's pick our starting geometry. And then I'm going to pick this main body. And so that is defined. Next up for my preserve geometry, what I want to remain the same. I'm going to select two of my bodies. Let's get the area where there's going to be the loading pad. Then I'm going to control and then toggle to the other body where I am going to have the part mounted. And then for excluded, oh, let's click the OK button to finish out of there. As I define these different design spaces, it automatically color codes those different areas. So for example, when I do excluded geometry and then pick this particular body and click the OK button, even though it was blue in my design model, it is highlighting it in red here. So now I've got all my different design spaces done. Next up, we are going to define our structural study. And so I need some constraints and a load. Let's go to the constraints button. And it opens up a dialog box and I'm going to pick the inside cylinders of the mount bodies and then click the OK button. And there you can see the indication that we have those different surfaces being fixed. Beware from the drop down. You do have some of the same other choices that you would have in, say, Creo Simulate or Creo Simulation Live, where you can simulate an enforced displacement or a planar connection or a cylindrical connection. Okay, next up, let's define our load case. And from the drop down, you can do forces, moments, pressures, centrifugal accelerations, and linear accelerations. But I'm going to do a simple force. Then I'm going to pick this surface that's going to be loaded. And in the lower right hand corner, I can see that the downward direction would be negative one in the y direction. So I'll enter that. And I want to put a little 20 pound force on there. By default, based on my model units, it wants to be in Newtons, but we can change that to pounds force. And then the magnitude is going to be 20. And then I can click the OK button. And so now the structural case has been defined. Next up, we need our design criteria. So I'll click on that. And here, by default, it is going to reduce the volume by 50%. Oh, let's try even more. Let's try 30% uh, as the limit to volume. And then you can define your different constraints. So from this dropdown, you'll notice that we have six different constraints in here. In other videos, I'll go through these in more detail. The first three pertain to the manufacturing method that you're going to use. So if build direction is if you're going to use additive manufacturing, then we can define our parting line. Hey, that obviously is if you're going to use a mold or casting. Then we have linear extrude for something 
that is going to be CNC machined. And let's try a build direction. And then for a reference, I'm just going to pick the datum plane top out of the model tree. You can see the arrow indicating the build direction. That's good. And here we have a critical angle. The default value is 45 degrees. If I go to the add constraints drop down, there are even some geometric constraints that you can add, like enforcing a planar symmetry. You can also specify material spreading and a minimum crease radius. But I'm not going to define any of those. Let's specify our material. I'm just going to go to the legacy materials. And then let me add, oh, I already have steel in here. Let me cancel out there. And let me select this steel. And so that's the material it's going to use. I forgot I already assigned steel to a few of the different bodies in here. Now I will click the OK button. And you can see that the study is fully defined. There's another icon over here for the study settings where you can do things like specify the minimum element size and the maximum number of iterations. And then you can also use this slider to specify whether you want to prioritize speed or detail. I'm going to leave all those settings the same. And now in order to perform my topology optimization, hey, we just hit the optimize button and let this run. And there I see it took about 28 seconds for the optimization to run. You can see that we have a little status window down there at the bottom. And if I look in here, you can see the geometry that would be 3D printed according to the specifications. Now let's make a part out of the result. You can click on the generate design icon. And here we can either output the result to the current part or to a new part, and it can be tessellated or reconstructed. I'm just going to use tessellated. And for the new part options, you can choose to copy only the result geometry. So that'll just give me like one feature for the reconstructed geometry. I won't have all the other features from the model tree. So let's choose generate, and I'll just take the default part name and click the OK button. And here's the result. I'm going to expand design items in the model tree. Let's expand bodies. And I'm going to select the new body that was created in here and then isolate it. I want to see only this particular body. And so there you can see the final result based on the criteria that was specified. And so that's how you can perform a topology optimization in Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.